A challenge beast is never late, nor are they early. They arrive precisely when they mean to. Beasts and hackers, internet, my name is Pridium, and while Survivor is not a sport, there are still similarities that draw comparison. Like sinking a three-pointer with a second on the clock, throwing a Hail Mary on the last play of the game, or nailing that insane birdie. Winning an immunity challenge exactly when you need to is a skill in and of itself. As we're about to see, many of these top 10 clutch wins led to victories, which is why you should never underestimate anyone. Because one day hell will freeze over and you will be a dead man walking. Which brings us to the first clutch immunity win on this list and that is from season 25 Philippines and it's with Jonathan Penner. At the final 10, Jonathan was that dead man walking. He negated five votes against him at the first merge tribal council the previous episode that would have sent him packing otherwise. Coming into this challenge, Penner knew the odds were against him. He was competing against nine players who did not want him in the game. And yet, despite that, he was invigorated to win. It was do or die. Put up or shut up. And for the first time in three seasons, Jonathan Penner one immunity. Not only did this extend his life in the game, but had he accepted Lisa and Scoopin's deal for the final four, I would actually say there's a good chance he wins this entire season. Penner wins immunity, lives to see another day. Oh! Penner, safe tonight at Tribal Council, cannot be voted out of this game. I don't even know what to say about that challenge. That was maybe the best thing I ever did. But speaking of a player who did win their entire season after the clutchest of wins, I have talked about her a lot before, but give it up for Vesepia from season four, Marquesas, who won the final four immunity challenge after she was backed into a corner and was facing imminent doom. Kathy, Pascal, and Nalia wanted her out and were ready to take her down. And then she took advantage of her poetry book notes where she had accumulated facts about the cast all season, expecting a trivia challenge to arrive late in the game. And she was right. A challenge about knowing your fellow castmates popped up and V was set. She won the challenge, put herself in the final three, and eventually went on to win the season. The first player, mind you, in Survivor history to win with a clutch immunity challenge, no less. I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna play the best immunity game that I can. If I don't win it, I know I'm out of here. And so be it. In which branch of the armed services did John train to be a nurse? V, if you get this right, you have 10 and you win. Air Force is correct. V wins immunity. But if we're going real old school, even older than season four, it's gotta be said that the OG Clutch Challenge winner easily, easily goes to Kelly Wigglesworth from season one, Borneo. After she was slated to get voted out at the final six, the final five, and then the final four, and then technically at the final three, you know, had Rudy won at least, Kelly decided she no longer wanted to work with her Tagi Four Alliance, and they mutually decided the same. They were ready to vote her out, and then, yeah, she won the endurance challenge and foiled their plans. She then won that spooky Blair Witch Project style challenge in the dark, followed up with the same trivia that V won in season four that I just talked about. And then finally, one of the most iconic challenges in Survivor history, hands on a hard idol. Kelly Wigglesworth, first of her name, she was the first challenge beast in Survivor. And just as well, she won those challenges when she needed to most. And Kelly, on the other hand, has no idea that she's leaving this evening. <laughs> I guess you get to keep this. There you go. Good job, Kelly. Nice job, it goes all right. Kelly, Christopher is right. Kelly, well done. Immunity. Four in a row. For Kelly. There you go. Five in That's a row. That's a record. We've seen a lot of challenge beasts throughout the decades of Survivor, and a lot of them also happen to win when they have to. And what I mean by that is that, sure, a lot of people talk about Colby Donaldson in season two in Australian Outback, but Colby never absolutely had to win until, say, you know, the final three. He just did so because he could. Is it clutch? I guess a little bit, but he probably wasn't gonna get voted out if he didn't win those anyway. On the flip side, a player who I think did need to win, especially early in the season, was Terry Dietz on season 12, Panama. Because even though he was holding that overpowered immunity idol, had he not won, it's very likely that he has to flush that bad boy the first instance that he doesn't win immunity. 
Terry entered the merge down in tribal numbers and knew that he was going to get targeted, but the problem for the opposing tribe was they never could vote for Terry even though they wanted to because he continuously won immunity challenges. From the final 10 to the final 5, Terry won 5 straight immunities for the entire post-merge. Terry did hold an idol in his pocket, the ugliest idol in Survivor history, and yet never needed to play it. The first time he lost immunity was at the final 4, but that was also the last time his idol could be played, so the other players didn't even bother voting for him. I consider all of Terry's wins to be clutch because of the circumstances, even though, even though he did end up losing the final Final immunity of the season, definitely not clutch there. What the hell kind of final challenge is that? Terry wins the first individual immunity. Terry wins immunity. Terry wins yeah, immunity yeah, yeah, yeah. for the third straight time. Yes. 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 Terry wins his fourth Boom. straight immunity. Terry yeah. wins immunity for the fifth straight time. Oh, oh. Shut up. You are undefeated in individual immunity challenges. Terry cannot hang on. The first person out of this challenge. Where Terry failed to clutch that final challenge, we have seen several winners do the opposite. Season 21, Nicaragua had one of my favorites as we saw Fabio win the final six, five, and four immunities back to back to back, all when he needed to most, as he definitely was getting voted out at each of those rounds had he not. And I mean, come on. Balancing uneven coins on the hilt of a sword that's being balanced upon a shield for a million dollars. Just another Wednesday evening for me. Fabio thinks he has it, and he does. Fabio wins immunity. Fabio has it. Fabio wins immunity. Fabio wins final immunity and will go to the final three. Mirroring Fabio, we also have Jenna Maraska on season six of the Amazon win the final six, five, and three immunities too, back when final twos were a thing. Remember, she was just blind said at the final seven votes and then went on to an immunity with her last shot at shuffleboard. Hey, shuffleboard counts. She then beat Matt, Rob, and Butch in an impressive blindfold maze run and eventually the final endurance challenge of the season to seal the deal. All of Jenna's wins were clutch, all equally deserving of being mentioned, all contributing to her strong finish. Well, it worked. Jenna knocks Heidi and Rob out of the game, wins immunity, nice job. You are safe from the vote tonight. You cannot be voted out. Wins immunity. Oh my God. Rob is out. Jenna, take a step down. You have the most important immunity. Take a seat. Congratulations. Michelle Fitzgerald, of course, is another clutch winner who didn't win a ton of consecutive challenges, but is low-key a beast when the stats are examined. She won nearly the same challenge twice, even to keep herself in the game, both at the final four of season 32, Ko Rong, and then at the final six of season 40, Winners at War. Heck, if you think about it, if it wasn't for that clutch win on season 32, she likely doesn't get the chance to do it again on season 40, given the theme. She's also the only person thus far to complete this puzzle, and it's markedly one of the most difficult in over 40 seasons of the show, and so yeah, for a million dollars, she's in the top 10. Michelle has it! Michelle wins individual immunity! Ah! Guaranteed spot in the final three! That's it. That is it! Oh. Michelle wins! Individual immunity! This leaves three spots open, and so... For the lulls. But also because it's still a really clutch win, I am putting Eric Reichenbach's win at the final five, and also at the final six, why not, in the top 10 from season 16 Micronesia fans versus favorites, even though, yes, even though everything that he did with it afterwards negates all of the hard work that he put into it to make it into this top 10. Remember, Eric was at the bottom at the final seven, six, and five, and won immunity at the final eight, James was then evacuated at final seven, and then Eric won again at the final final six and five. Huh, sounds like a pretty similar trajectory to the other players I was just talking about on this video. Through all of the hubbub that ends up happening after this, Eric was a beast and was foiling the Black Widows who wanted him out. Part of what makes Eric's giving up the immunity win so frustrating to watch is that he very likely could have won this season by just 
winning the final four and three immunities, which given we know what they were, we can say he stood a good chance at. He could totally tie the record at five immunities, potentially winning over the jury. And yeah, I am basically writing fan fiction at this point, but still Eric's win is impressive. And while everyone just wants to sit around and talk about and remind him of what happened after he won the challenge for just a second, I would like to acknowledge what he did before that. I'm scared, I'm the next to go. I can't stress how important it is that I win the next immunity. Right now, it's just like the animal kingdom. It's either you win and survive or you fail and you die. Eric thinks he has it. Guaranteed final four. Eric wins immunity once again. Once again, immunity is yours. If he didn't have that necklace, he'd be gone. I wonder if he would give Nat his necklace. Okay. Two spots left. Can we include Shian in All Stars? I want to include Shian in All Stars. Not only did Shian make it into a hack video with this win, she was up against some strong competitors in Rupert and Rob. She was down six to one and was next to go. And yet she stood up there with her hand in the air like she just did care a whole hell of a lot. And you know what? She won. It didn't really change the season much, but it was fun to see a wrinkle in the plan and her cheering was just enjoyable to watch. But let's save the most clutch for last. While I'm not really ranking these, I will say that if I had, this player is number one. Not only were they on the bottom from the final nine onward, but they won five of the next six immunity challenges and unlike Terry, did win the season. They fulfilled the Deets Gambit. The clutchest immunity challenge win goes to pretty much every single one of Mike Holloway's wins on season 30, Worlds Apart. From the obstacle course with the balls at the final nine, to the endurance challenge at the final eight, to the grappling hook table maze at the final six, to the blindfold maze at the final five, to this monstrosity at the final four. Outside of the final seven, Mike was clutch every step of the way. And he had an idol at the final seven, so it wasn't the end of the world anyway. Watching this season live was an experience. We had just never seen a player be at the bottom from this far back and actually pull it off. Be this clutch on a consistent basis and also win this season. Perhaps the clutchest part of it all. Indeed, Mike, I tip my wizard hat. Mike wins! Individual immunity! Rodney can't do it! Rodney is out! Mike wins! Individual immunity! Mike wins! Individual immunity! Mike has it! Mike wins! Individual immunity for the fourth time! Mike! Individual immunity! His fifth! Guaranteed a spot at the final three. Thank you, Jesus. And those are what I consider to be the top 10 most clutch immunity challenge wins in Survivor. It's technically more than 10, but there's a cascading effect with some of the players. Either way, let me know if some of the other clutch wins out there, because let me tell you, I could definitely look at a top 20 or even top 30 for this topic. Maybe I will. A huge thank you to my patrons for coming up clutch literally every month. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to study up on your way out, especially how to balance on a lily pad. And I will see you in the next one. Once we do the happy dance, baby. This is what we do, baby. We do the happy dance. We do the happy dance. You know what we do when we win the immunity necklace? We do the happy dance, baby. We do the happy dance because we're happy. Thank you.